Blender needs you or your workspaces. So there has been a, a call for matcaps in the past, a call for content where people can contribute uh, matcaps. This is still going, we're gonna review them soon, but now it's time for another call for content, this case for workspaces. So if you're not familiar what a workspace is, it's uh, in 2.7, the, the way of setting up like the way your, your um, uh, editors are spread and everything it was, was done via screens. So you could choose like video editing and it was very clear that you were like in a different setup. But in, in um, 2.8, this works with this layout screen goes a bit more uh, beyond that and it's a workspace. So the difference is that in Blender 2.8, the, work, the workspaces, all these layouts of your editors are actually displayed on the top. So they are much more, um, they gives a lot more discoverability and they have special features. So for example, they can have more than one window. They can have children window and it's the same workspace. When you change, it's gonna change the, that window layout. And also they can have their own add-ons. So in the workspace settings, you can choose which add-ons are gonna be only for this workspace. And that allows huge of the customization because then you can have very specific tasks and very specific workspaces with the uh, specific add-ons that only work there, which is great because then it, they don't um, they don't change the way Blender works in different workspaces. So you can have a, yeah, you can customize a lot there. But with great power comes great responsibility. So this responsibility now is left to the community. Let's all decide what are the default workspaces in Blender. So the um, in 2.7, there were a few uh, based, based on, on workflow. So animation, compositing, game logic, everything, including one that is called default, which meant that default was the one that 99.999% of the people use. And uh, changing the layouts is so fast anyway that you ended up just tweaking the one. Um, in um, 2.8, the idea is, well, of course you can do the same. You can tweak and you can customize and be just changing all the time. But with this added value that now you can um, have their own add-ons or their own even like drawing mode. So here, for example, you can be with a matcap and then in this one, you can be with the workbench or with um, uh, Eevee, for example. So this way you can do sculpting with a nice matcap here, for example. So this could be my like sculpting um, workspace. And then this one would be more for like shading. And uh, this gives it a lot more power. So we hope to take advantage of that power. And we made a little list here in the call for content workspaces thread on devtalk.blender.org in the user feedback code quest um, section. Here you will find a blog post where I say the ones that we think they should be uh, by default modeling. So modeling is similar to just what happens when you start Blender. Maybe modeling could, for example, not have the timeline. So you just focus on the one task. So even the outliner, but maybe since you're gonna have more objects, maybe it makes sense to have the outline somewhere else, for example. Just go nuts and focus on the center. I don't know. Um, for modeling, you probably need the, the top bar if you want to have access to everything. But if you're doing video editing, uh, the editor, the video editor still doesn't have any active tools. So for that, maybe we can just not use the top bar. So yeah, there are so many things that you can play, uh, many ways you can play with. Shading, maybe you could have the node editor, the, the shading editor, the new shading editor, and the 3D view. Uh, 3D animation could have the dub sheet and the uh, graph editor. 2D animation is the grease pencil. It's gonna be only for grease pencil stuff. I think this one will mainly be the the people from um, the Hero Open Movie Project. So Daniel Martinez Lara and um, or or artists that have been involved with grease pencil, which for example Matias Mendiola. So I think they will take care of that one, but if you have proposals and uh, they're welcome, still you need the Grease Pencil branch to, to see how it's gonna look. So it's, uh, maybe you just need to wait until that is merged in the coming weeks. UV editing, 
that is self-explanatory. Texture painting, that's a new one that it was in T2.7, and it could be um, more towards like maybe the image editor and just like mainly for that task for like painting. So you can optimize it for that. Sculpting, like the one I showed, maybe just a matcap, full screen, a few specific add-ons that could be uh, made for uh, making the um, sculpting much easier. So I think there are a few that are built in Blender or some of them that could be included in Blender for this specific task. So it's really nice that now you can have uh, custom add-ons per workspace because it means that we could be a bit more loose in the add-ons that get involved and ship with Blender. So um, because if they pollute the interface, it at least is only gonna be in that one section, right? In that one, one workspace. Then uh, motion tracking, of course, scripting, compositing, video editing, and rendering. Rendering is also th something that it wasn't there, but uh, talking with Canva, we were thinking that way. What if instead of pressing F12 and having a new window, what if you could switch to the rendering, um, it could be an option, I switch to the rendering workspace where you will have like the histogram or like the um, nice, uh, maybe for color correction, who knows? Like, we, we could think about that. Um, but that's one of the views that could be included by default. There's also extra workspaces, which are going to be available when you press the plus icon. There are gonna be a list of workspaces that they don't necessarily need to be built in with Blender like show by default, but it would be nice to have them like retopology, or maybe this one actually is like a sort of modeling. I don't know. Maybe because Retopo could have its own add-ons for Retopology. 3D printing, there is a nice 3D printing toolbox add-on built in Blender that is never is not enabled by default and it could be enabled in this specific um, workspace. Hard, hard, ops, hard surface modeling or motion graphics or architecture or you should propose more. It's nice to have um, input on what people are using it for. So. Yes, propose more maybe if you have a very specific workspace that you want people to um, to discuss, like very, I don't know, very specific, and you wanna talk about it, please make a new thread. Don't, uh, don't discuss it here, let's keep it this for just um, more, uh, yeah, screenshots, you know, something more visual. Um, then for sharing, how to share it, use the latest and greatest Blender 2.8 build. You know where to get it. If you're watching this, uh, you know where to get it. It's always uh, the last one. Then uh, use the default theme. Don't change the theme settings for the for this, please. So you go to file. If you're using a, sp have a very specific um, layout here, like a theme color, you can just go to um, file, load factory settings, and it will start Blender from scratch. So this will it will make it look like it was from the beginning, how it's meant to be. So that way we can compare how, how it all looks. Then uh, start with the default preferences, please. PS, go to File, Load Factory Settings, and this is the default settings. Then, if in your workspace you have a very specific way of working or you have a setting that is works better for that, like a specific um, um, way of working, setting for that one um, workspace, please write it and say why. Then um, factory startup, no models, no extra add-ons. The add-ons you should mention which ones you will think. Uh, just mention and maybe give a link if they're somewhere. <coughs> Very commercial add-ons and yeah, <laughs> that's uh, kind of a gray area because they can be included, they're GPL. But yeah, there is like, we need to agree with the developers if it's fine or the developer of the add-on if it's cool with it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> there is a bit more involved in there. How to take a screenshot? Well, you can just, I think any screenshot will work. You, it doesn't really take, a, it's not a big science to see <laughs> the, how the layout works. But if there is more things involved, like settings that you changed, you can also share a blend file, which I'm gonna explain in a bit. But the, um, the best way is just to take a screenshot, I think. That's, that's the most visual way. You can, uh, here I explain it, basically disable the decoration, don't show the window decoration, Windows or Mac or window decoration. And you can also um, just launch Blender in 1080p. That's a good way to see with the default size everything. Um, if you have a 4K screen, you should also use the 1080 window. And that way, if you have a way too big screen, you can launch Blender with any resolution by doing um, 
blender dash p then zero zero is the position and then is the resolution in uh, width and height that way you force blender the blender window to be a small like this will be 100 by 100 which is the smallest you can get anyway uh, with that said, you can test things. You can test how to make your own workspace. Here I explain it a little bit in this, um, this post. But basically, you can test your own workspaces. So for example, if I have my workspace here that has a big shader editor, or like let's one Python console. Let's say I'm the most pro ever, and I only use a Python console. And I want to save this, so I can save it as my very pro, very pro workspace. To rename it, by the way, you can do control click on the tab and you can rename it. Uh, maybe th that can be exposed somewhere here, but that's how you do it for the time being. So you um, save this blend file in your config. So home user, well, that's for Linux, but in the same place where you have your startup and the user pref, you can do, you can save this file as workspaces, plural save the blend file, and the next time you open Blender, Blender will come with the default workspaces, like in this case, general, and then a new one will appear. It's maybe very pro, and that's how you can test that your workspaces are there. And also you can use it for your own things. So this is pretty nice. Uh, it's, a, it's a very nice feature. It's a bit hidden right now. You have to, yeah, you have to save with a specific name on your config, but it's a work in progress. And uh, yeah, just, both. If you uh, want to make your own, please do. Otherwise, go here and find the ones that you that you like and click on the heart icon on the um, on the comment. So that way we know which ones are more more popular. For example, here, for example, Sivas uh, 3D he posted this one, and I gave a, a bit of feedback that we should expose a few more settings, and uh, he did it. And this way we get back and forth. So yes. Please contribute. Uh, if you're, let, let's all make it uh, together. The same way we did it with Madcaps, which is insane the amount of feedback we had. It's like how many? 146 replies. <laughs> so, and people are still contributing. So, please go and give it a, th uh, a heart icon to the ones that you think are the best. So that way we can keep track and um, choose the ones that will ship with Blender by default. So I think I mentioned everything up here. Everything is okay. Let's uh, let's let's make this um, together. Let's make the workspaces and make it a nice experience. Please read the blog post. I give I, I say a few things that are nice to <laughs> to follow. Like the workspace should have a clear goal and a clean design. So don't try to shove like shovel too many tasks into one. It should be like a one task work workspace. So don't Let's try to keep it the, the, the number of editors to a minimum, only the ones that you need. And uh, with that said, let's let's see what uh, well, what you guys come up with. I will see you again in the next uh, video. Ciao, gracias, adios, au revoir.